Ryan with Landscaping Maine, and this is uh, John Payne. John Payne, and uh, he's the gentleman who's done all the paintings. He's going to tell us just a little bit of his background and what he's done. Okay, um, I am a starving artist for 40 years, of course. Uh, within two and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with a, a cancer on my nose. They operated on it twice and uh, did not get it all at that time. I uh, ran out of insurance and I couldn't pursue it for almost two years. Oh, no. uh, in the meantime, and within that two years, I was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma of my throat, head and neck cancer. And at this moment, I'm going through my radiation and chemotherapy. So, that being said, uh, and being an artist of 40 plus years, unknown artist, I um, went to my studio and pulled out about uh, 15 of my paintings that are also poems, painted poems, they tell stories, and I've put them out here on Interstate 27 to Kingfield and uh, New Vineyard, Maine, to hopefully share with others, which will fulfill a promise to my late mother. Oh, wow. She said I was being selfish by not sharing my work uh, with those that uh, cast an eye in that direction. I would agree with your mother so, 100%. Yeah, I do, and I, and, I, and I understood this inside of me, but I, I lived my life uh, as, as a reclusive kind of guy. Yes. A farm guy. I had cattle, Spanish cattle for many years. Farming. Farming. And they were my, uh, my sounding boards along with my greatest fan mom. Uh, where I wrote over 200 poems. I have written over 200 poems. I've written a manuscript of 80,000 plus words titled Tom Foolery by the Devil Himself. Nice. And I, and I cool. also have a, uh, a manuscript of 26 thousand plus words uh, and I've been working on it for several years off and on and it's a story in rhyme. Really? Yes. That's I hope to be one of the first people that's ever wrote a novel. Even if it, I it, never yeah. get published, but at least for my own satisfaction. That would a be amazing, a novel in rhyme. Yeah, it's a consistent rhyme. How far, is it, how far along are you? Thirty couple chapters. Couple chapters? Yeah. Do you have a name that you're gonna call it? I I, I do. It's uh um it's, it's changed a couple of times, so I don't know if I want to, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, and, I, and I thought this around, and the reason I give it this kind of a Mr. King name, yeah. no offense to Steve, but I, I dubbed it Dog Holler. Doug Holler. Oh, wow. And yet it's not a horror story. It's, no. it's, a, it's, it's the uh, 180 degree difference of that. It's a story of morality, of common sense, of, of how nature has been trying to teach us for eons of time how to do things a simple way, and yet our kind to include us. Yeah. Human beings have uh, fought, fought it very yeah. hard. Yeah, we have fought it. Yeah, we don't seem for to whatever want reason. It's like a, it. Yeah, it's like we're under some sort of yeah, a spell are. in a way. So uh, yeah. I was wondering if you'd like to maybe explain some of your paintings and yeah. how, what inspired you. Yeah. All right. I can tell you what inspired me. This is the poem I used to paint on. Oh wow, that's yeah. a beautiful. That one that's right there is what? Yeah. Right, right I did that about. Uh, it's an acrylic. All right. Uh, of the farmhouse where my dad and mom lived, and then I lived. Yeah. I went outside one day and looked at this. Yeah. I never took a photograph of it. I never really, went back out and looked again. I went up into my studio in this very house, this room right here, right there rather, yeah. and I set up this canvas and I painted it from start to get to end almost consecutively around the clock with my acrylics until I thought it would look like my house and then I went outside. And believe it or not, if you go down there by that house today, other than I changed the color to few years yeah. ago, it's that house. That's amazing. It's that brook. Tape. But this is bright. I, I'm bold. I'm a bold artist. That is beautiful. I love breaking rules and color. I love to put a lot of realism in some areas uh, and purposely go more towards what I call a surreal than to even an abstract within surreal. You're, make like it, play. you're making it yourself. Can I ask it's you a my question? art. It's here. Yeah. You have to express yourself. Now, once you finish it, uh -huh. do you do you spray it? No, none them? of these have ever been treated. They oh. hung in my studio. Okay. Uh, that they, would be something maybe if someone bought them and they had a certain... Oh, yeah. Some people have uh, funny. You know, want to gloss, you want to match, you want to... Yeah. And, well, and so, okay, it's still safe. It's cleanable. Oh, it, oh, it is. Because I was yeah, wondering, do you think the spray, do you feel, is your opinion? If there's a dog here in it, it, I need to charge extra for it. No. <laughs> like, that's right. That's a big expression. But do you yes. feel it's like Signature when somebody stuff. buys one or, or if you paint one yourself uh -huh. or someone else, do you feel that the spray helps preserve them or does it matter? Oh, you know what? Let me say this. I am a self-taught artist. I've made a lot of mistakes in art. I'm yeah, sure that that's the, how you the, learn. The critics would say, "Oh no, you can't do that." And yet, if I did, I'm kind of proud of myself. Yeah. 
Sometimes you find I think of that as being clever. Jeez, I made a mistake on that. You know, I did good. Yeah, yeah, right. but it, it looks pretty really good. Like, I, I just like, figured something out nobody else has. That's like right. when you painted one from years ago, yeah. over time, do they tend to fade or if you don't spray them, do they look like Yeah, yeah, and they'll pick up you yellow do, or if you're a smoker, right. your house odors. Absolutely. So slacking or, or so the slacking does would preserve them a little yeah. bit, you think? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're thinking, and maybe you are. I'm hoping that hangs in the Smithsonian someday. Yeah. My feelings. <laughs> then yeah, so seal that over, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, for the future. It's beautiful. I mean, your work is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, good. Thank you. I, yeah, I, all of these are poems. They're poems. So, yeah. what, what part like of the poem this is this? One. Quickly this passing. Here. Let me do this poem for you. Yeah, this is titled "Quickly Passing." Quickly passing. It's an acrylic. Um, I did this about 30, maybe 30 some years ago. The poem I'll do right now. All right. Bone chilling cold upon this midwinter day. Heavy wet snow collects upon me shivering shoulders and on me old tattered hat it does lay. Subdued light brings early darkness before night as deep dark gray clouds seem to pull the shade or setting sun to block its ray. Nonetheless, not right. Frigid temperatures arrive. I have no place to stay. I am dressed not for this occasion, yet be out I say, as shifting sheets of cutting ice crystals fall to obscure my only way. Oh, this is a frightening day. Suddenly light appears upon a thin blanket of white, which tells of an early squall that brought dismay. Though ferocious and fearsome, this may be ending soon. As soon to be as what I pray. Oh my God, man, that is awesome! That, and that is that. the poem that goes with this painting right here. This man is telling a story. He needs to get it out there, guys. Come on. That is so. Amazing. So as the story goes, uh, they diagnosed as cancer. They started a radiation and therapy at the same time. It's a an advanced stage three. They uh, are hoping to extend my life so I can actually continue do this. Right. Yeah, share with others uh, to fulfill my promise to my my, my mom. Norma Jean. My mom's name was Norma Jean Cradler. She's oh, Indian. Wow. She's an Indian girl. Awesome. They picked up the last name because they were babysitters. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Now, yeah. I gotta tell you, like this one right here, this is one of my favorite ones. One color. It, it's, it's got that, that dark I depth to it for I me. Should, I should have brought them out. I have several that are just one color. And that's called a reverse oil. A reverse I, oil? I paint that all black. I'm getting ready to do one actually. I paint that all black and then I take the color off of the cloth. Really? And, I, and that's all is there, is the canvas and the color black. Do you have like kind of a poem with each painting? I do. Or just certain I have over 200 poems. Wow. Yeah, I so, have more poems than so paintings. So you kind of got like a story. <laughs> yeah, you caught up the on the paintings. Because yeah. I, I loved it when yeah, you painted talked poems. about that one. That's just... Everyone, a mother and I. That makes it so unique. I've never yeah. heard of Sway doing poetry one. painting. It's incredible. You want to hear? Here's the, actually, you can read this one. Uh, it's starting to come apart from dampness. But I, I wanted to make these for people that can't really afford and I did this years ago and it hung in my studio, it's got spider, but it can clean up. But this is just for a demo, uh, because if somebody could afford a print of this with the poem, yeah. like this, right. for a relatively ex inexpensive amount. Yeah. Inexpensive not, being... Not everybody could afford the original painting on their wall, and I get it, right. I can't. That's now, how, here. how much does something like this one here sell for? Uh, well, uh, that, that I'm going to say about 275 Okay. Without the frame. Without the frame. I just use my frames for all displays because they're expensive oh, anyway. Yeah. yeah, and it protects them while they're out yeah, here too. Yeah, yeah, and displays them a little nicer. Or switch them around. Yes. But yes. And oh, here's a poem though that this can go out west, man, on YouTube. It's actually about sodium, potassium, magnesium, chlorine, calcium, and all this stuff that makes up everything that exists. And it's agitated by the, the slosh of the ocean. Really? It's a washing machine. Mother's Nature's washing yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good Common way to sense. look at that. Absolutely. It, it, it filters into the ocean, it's saline. It starts to sterilize it. Little amoebas break it down. It gets eaten and gobbled, breaking smaller particles. It becomes so small, so light, the sun pulls it up. The currents of the air drift it over to land. It brings us right It does it only for us. With, without what other than that we exercise the main. It's the high philosophies. You don't keep pulling oil out of an earth when an oil is a lubricant and then in the same breath try to scratch your head and wonder why tectonic plates are rumbling harder. Huh? Take the grease out of your wheel bearings, sir, and drive up and down the highway for a while and tell me if the quake 
and the tremor and the, and, 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 the, and, the friction and the damage won't increase yeah. by leaps and bounds quickly. Wow. Absolutely. That that so if we're lot. sucking That's oil out, we're making hollow areas, yeah. surface waters are disappearing. I wonder why lakes are going down. Maybe they're going yeah. into these huge cavities. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're making right. culverts, it basically. Makes sense. So now we're running hot scalding water, which fractures rock even. Yep. To, and it wasn't, this is on my own. But it wasn't bad enough that we were sucking out the oil and other, other, other precious minerals that are necessary beyond our understanding, gold being one of them. Gold isn't just pretty, worthless stuff, and now we use it in laptops. Yeah. It has a very, very important function to the planet. Yes. Oh. And we're hoarding it into places it's not functional. Like jewelry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right, exactly. I don't understand there a, gold there jewelry. A, there was a purpose. Never understood. Yeah. So anyway, all my stories, all my poems, including this one, so this tells this about one, washing. Yeah. What inspired this painting? Um, 19... This is probably 1980s. And ins um, what inspired it was? My concern about uh, the, 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 the other why in the road that which we took wrong. Now which why would that be? If we were going to, let's say, dig deeper, make uh, uh, more toxic power plants to produce power and energy, to supply the demand, instead of reaching up and wondering, the sun. So you're very much a solar person. Well, I, I, I believe everything was here uh, provided for us. We just had to be smart enough to harness the power. We, well, we had to put more effort. We're smart enough. I'm not. We just get a lot of, <laughs> we get a lot of obstacles. See, the obstacles are... I'm, a, I'm an obstacle. <laughs> yes. me. Yeah. You are smart enough. Hold your hand up. You feel the heat? That feels good. Your body's doing it then. You're already solar. Uh, That's crazy. good point. So uh, how do I wow. stick it in there and charge a battery? <laughs> you, you are possibly with vitamin D, it, but right, they're right. making it where it's not good for us as, as it used to be either. Uh, well, that's right. problems, and we all know what's going on. Yeah, well, it's all messed up. Yeah. Okay, so it's global warming, back. global freezing. It's it, up it, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to global warming. <laughs> I'm tired of freezing my butt here in Maine. Uh, yeah, because I didn't have no heat last so, winter because I was trying to get money to go get my teeth taken uh, out so I could go fight cancer. Uh, uh, the, the wages of war is expensive. Oh, it, it, you know, even for rich I, people. I have a chronic yeah. illness. I understand. Let me do cattle. Okay. So cattle guy, cattle guy. So cattle guy is from when? This is another acrylic. This is one of my older. This is about 40 years ago. Really? Yeah. So how, old, how old were you? When I you was driving tractor trucks, well. probably about 20 years old. Just out of the army. Yeah. And I got a job driving a tractor trailer. I thought as a cowboy. In those days, starts with blue jeans, cowboy boots. People respected you, buttoned down yeah, shirts. Absolutely. Mom and pops in mobile homes even called you on the CB radios. Right. Those were the days for truckers. So here I was, a young trucker with an ambition to see the world, yep. you know, and be a cowboy. So I was out west one day. I saw a surreal scenario, a mirage, if you will, from being tired. Uh, all caffeined up, traveling to get to my destination on time. And I see this, and I never forgot that, because this is kind of what I saw. So as I was trucking, I wrote a poem, Cattle Drive. Did the painting later, acrylic. Yeah. Yeah, nice, do, nice do you know the poem? I do. Would you say it for I us? Will. Cattle Drive. Can you I'll hold the painting while up. you say it? I'll try not to mess this poem up, All right. but it's a, it's a captured audience. All right, yes. let's do this. It's a good thing. It is. Um, I rode an Indian pony and drove cattle across vast painted plains, sitting tall and hand me down leather, holding firmly to rawhide reins. I was steady with calloused hands, sure as an eagle's eye, often riding through bad weather in the direction wild birds wouldn't fly. I persisted against uneven odds. I became sore from the ride in rough saddle. Spent many a cold night in the lightning and rain singing softly to nervous young cattle. On clear nights, I peered deeply through an azure sky to watch our only moon bright and shine, or to see a shooting star streak by. My ears have been lent to the echo of whippoorwills hidden among fallen leaves and the cooing of morning doves above in tall sturdy trees. At times, I have been startled from the lone coyote yell or the yearning of a gray wolf howl. And once, I felt buzzards patiently waiting. And I was twice keenly seen by a great horned owl. Often I became discouraged from dank morning breezes, it seems, as I fought myself not to lose sight of necessary dreams. Yes, I've hidden from the unforgiving sun many times in the scorching desert. But truly I relaxed and camped my calm screen. Worry had been on my rugged face many times from the relentless demands of the drive. 
pushing for days without water to keep these critters alive. Now beyond the next mesa lie the edge of Cattle Town. So with help from hired hands upon well-managed horses, we will corral these doggies down, then ride like the wind from yonder stockyard and track to spend most of the night with a drink playing cards. Then after high noon auction, start our long journey back. Oh, That's that is awesome. amazing. And that is, the name one more time of this? Cattle Drive. Cattle Drive. Now, may I that just is amazing. Should be in a museum. Okay, any of our viewers would like to purchase any of these. Is there any particular way to get in touch? I'm going to give you guys, since you're kind enough to take your time here, the formalities. I don't have business cards. I, okay. I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm fulfilling the promise. Right. Yes, sir. And I, it took and me, I admire you for my that. My mom died in 2009 uh, after living with me for three years and me promising her I was going to do this when things settled down. And it's taken me from 2009, a doctor telling me I, I smoked cigarettes for 40 years and didn't you know you might get throat cancer. And the truth is, yes, I heard it many times, so it was my fault. So I ended up facing throat cancer, which put me on hold for these other years. Now, as I fight my throat cancer today, uh, and smoke free for Two months today. All right, congratulations. You betcha. So how do we get in touch with you? We're down, we're down to one bar. Oh, uh, you can actually uh, find me at Ravensbrook Art on Raven. the internet. I don't really have a website. I used to, but I have to let it go. And your name uh, again my is? My name is John Payne. John uh, Payne, P-A-I-N-E? -P Correct. I am a direct descendant of Thomas Payne, uh, one of the signers of our Declaration of Independence, as well as a writer of which some of us have read, a book called Common Sense. If you haven't, it's a hard read. Pick it up. It's thick. Good. You know, I never made it through high school, but I did it. Uh, so, I just may have to read that. Do it. Well, I first of all, Patrick and I would like to thank you, John, yeah, so much welcome. for your time. And I hope that's cool. And well, hopefully, hopefully we can get some people to notice your stuff. Everyone. You. Uh, highly recommend it. His work is the camera's not doing it justice. And as you know, he's a phenomenal man. He's keeping a promise to his mother, which I, I admire. I also have a, a if you have time, I have a real nice studio I put together while I suffered from cancer last year. Two hundred year old buildings I joined together on Ravens Brook. And two great big picture windows outlook overlooking the brook. As soon as I get over my cancer and start making some money, I want to make it into a nice studio where people might be able to come visit me and enjoy my art. And while you're there, I'll throw you three, three techniques that will increase the quality of your art uh, within no time. Serious. I'm serious. No, are you kidding me? I'm still no, that's why I've given away three no. techniques. If they don't work, I'm like, hey. but if you want, if you want to give lessons, he's—I mean, he hasn't done it for years. He's kind of giving it up, Patrick. Here, yeah. someday down so. the end of this road, six miles. Is, now, is, which uh, road is this? This is a uh, horseback road. Horseback road. You live out there? Uh, this is your uh, studio. I'm lying. <laughs> this is 234 Valley Road. Valley oh, Road. Okay. Yes. You're lying to us now, guys. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just, that's how politicians get caught. Is the horseback road a right off this one? It is. And okay, I'm the, the farmhouse before, before the horseback. Yeah. There's a farmhouse. Yeah. That is this painting. You'll recognize oh, it. Yeah. That's yeah. your old Before house. they tore the barn down, yes, yeah. last wow. year. And I am just prior to that in a gray trailer. Yeah. But my studio is at, yeah. it's, it's, the brook goes like between our properties like yeah. this anyway. So my art studio I'm working yeah. on is right there on oh, the brook. Wow. Raven's Brook. Ravensbrook. Named after an old boy. I had a Scottish Highlander bull named Raven that lived to be over 20 years. Wow. I had a cow I had to live 19 years and three months right there on my farm. That's awesome. uh, they lived right on that brook. I titled it That's myself awesome. Ravensbrook. And my Beautiful. studio is Ravensbrook Art. Ravensbrook Art. Well, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Again, thank you, John, so much. You're welcome. We appreciate guys. it. It's a pleasure talking, talking to you. you. Yeah. I'm just tickled to death that you. Uh, have given me such nice roses. Well, I, uh, I'm really hoping we can get you some. So if you want uh, to so. about it, I can write it down also. Let's do this. If you, uh, you want to write down your phone number stuff for us, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, we'll do that. Anyway. I'll try to get cards someday. And, and if you have internet out. access, we can write down our link for you. That's right. All right, guys, we're going to sign off with John. Thank you for watching. Guys, we just, uh, as you saw, we just met John Payne, an amazing man. We didn't film everything he spoke of. and. He's very intelligent. Gosh, yes. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this video up for him, but then we're going to go to a studio and do a really good one with multiple cameras and let you guys hear more about what he's got to say and his philosophies and things that he's learned. Um, 
just he, he's one of the most interesting people I would say that I think we've ever met. Yes. He's, he really is. He's very a good thinker. Depth. So this watch this video with John. Obviously, you did. Thank you so much. Support John and his fight with cancer. And and if you like his paintings, contact either he or us, and we'll get you in touch with him, and you can buy a painting from him. Like I said, we're gonna go to the studio. We're gonna do a part two. So there's gonna be a part two with this with this wonderful man named John Payne. So hang in there and be sure to stay tuned.